Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is if you have your natal Jupiter in the second house, which is the house of earned income and your possessions and, you know, it's a money house and it's personal to you and what you attract into your reality. And Jupiter is this planet that's associated with luck, abundance, and positivity. So needless to say, this is a great combination. Usually I will go to a site like advancedastrology.com, which I have before me right now, and paraphrase some of what they've said and just, you know, compile a list. I was so, it's not about being disappointed or anything like that, but I have this placement and albeit I do have it, I do have Jupiter retrograde here. So maybe that, uh, changes things a little bit, but it was so like, um, straightforward about, oh, you come from a wealthy fan, you know, you come from abundance, well-to-do family. I, I'll just read, uh, one of their sentence, two of their sentences verbatim. Jupiter in the second house, people usually spend their whole life in abundance. They often come from well -to -do, a well-to-do family, learning about finances from an early age. Now, um, that was not true for me, okay? Um, I came from a lower middle class family. I had two parents who worked white-collar professions, although my mom didn't start working until later. So in my childhood, or it was actually adolescence more like it. So we were living on one income anyway, but, um, neither one of them at that time was making that much money. And, um, and I actually qualified for free lunches, but I, uh, I was happy that my mother asked me whether or not I wanted to get them because I said no. And I think that is part of Jupiter in the second house is having a high sense of self-esteem. Now that doesn't mean, uh, let me tell you, that doesn't mean that you always uh, feel that way. I think it's innate. And I, th I think that that is ultimately what all of these placements are is that they represent something at a very deep level that's kind of built into the person in this incarnation. Remember, we're not talking about necessarily in every incarnation, but it, you know, if you want to say that it's coming from past lives, um, the development that we um, have, then maybe that as well. But I think that for me, even though on paper, I didn't come from a well-to-do family. I did grow up in an, uh, an, like a town that had, um, affluent people. And so I rubbed shoulders with people who had more money than I did, especially as I got older and I was not in my immediate area, but the other parts of the town that had, that were more, uh, you know, affluent that I be became exposed to that. And I think that is very important overall because when people are isolated in poverty, low income environments, and everybody's on that even playing field, it can be good in the sense that you don't feel uh, inferior to anyone because you have the same resources or lack thereof, but by the same token, it can limit your scope in life. And Jupiter is about expansion. So even if, if you, um, are, or were like me, where you did not, or don't have, um, an affluent lifestyle and you're like, Oh, this astrology thing is really bogus. It can simply be that you, are able to, you're fortunate because that's Jupiter enough to have exposure to that in life in whatever way. Maybe you have married into a family that is affluent. Maybe, um, you have a, a, a friend who comes from a wealthy family and you go over and spend time 
uh, with her and her family, or they invite you on vacations because they know that your family doesn't have the means to do that. Whatever that has meant for you, um, it can give you a sense of possibilities. And the other thing too, um, by the way, Donald Trump has this position and he would have been all of these things because I think, you know, his father made a good living with real estate while he was growing up. So he didn't, he didn't, um, experience living a working class lifestyle ever. Um, but even if you have been there and done that, I think that you still believe it's possible at any stage of life to become wealthy. So you have a positive attitude about it. Now, the other thing that I did resonate with is that, um, I, I saw it somewhere else and I can't find it. So, uh, they said something like, if you have Jupiter in the second house, even if you don't have like all that much money, you feel like you're rich. You feel like you have enough. And that's really like part of the law of attraction is really, um, feeling that way, not feeling like the five of pentacles, like lack consciousness, because if you think like that, it's very hard to attract other than that. Um, because you just have a pessimistic, um, view of, your possibilities in life. Um, this position as, and, and also I just want to say, if you're like me and you have the retrograde, then your, your, um, approach to it will probably be less materialistic and more about values and how they connect to you, like being a moral person. And of course, we don't always succeed in that. And we haven't in the past, but at least if that's something you're striving for, um, you know, the ethical part living, uh, with an ethical framework that can be most nourishing to you. And I'd also look at your sign of Jupiter. Like for instance, mine is in Gemini. So when I was a kid books, and even now, to be honest with you, books, were like my greatest wealth. I, I mean, my greatest possession. So I, I always, um, cherished my books. And, um, so I, I just feel that, um, this particular site has been so helpful for me with the Jupiter, um, you know, placements. But in this case, I feel like they stress this so much. Um, they, they mentioned that this can indicate hedonism. In other words, you know, excessive, what, what would you call it? Like, um, pleasure seeking. And the only thing I can think of is, you know, the second house is ruled by Taurus in the universal chart. So anything Taurian, like, uh, in Taurus is ruled by Venus and Venus is associated with the finer things in life and pleasure. So I would definitely, um, you know, look at how you relate to, you know, material things. Do you, are you, um, a shopaholic? Do you, do you collect, are you a collector of things and it's gone too far? Um, so spending issues, like spending beyond your means. They say if Jupiter is afflicted that you can have a tendency to do that. I have, um, and if I have afflictions with Jupiter myself, it's funny. They said, but don't worry, you are not likely to end up living in po poverty. And they say that Jupiter in the second house has, and I'm reading this verbatim, verbatim, an innate talent for making money. And they say that you can even do this, um, at a younger age, you know, than the average age. Now, again, that certainly was not true for me. So perhaps because I have it retrograde, I was internalizing those values rather than making it a material thing. It was more about, um, kind of trying to build up my own self-worth and just as a spiritual 
um, interests and those kinds of things. Because Jupiter rules the ninth house, and that is the God house. I will say, too, that in terms of the way that you make money, um, it can be through some kind of religious, spiritual route or subject matter. Um, and also publishing, or I would just say by extension, writing. Again, I have Jupiter in Gemini, so it can definitely be about writing. And um, I did, I have um, a nonfiction book that's uh, that I have uh, on my uh, website for my astrology, but I also have self-published a book that is a young adult novel, fiction book. And, um, you have to, when you're on Amazon, you have to, uh, name your publishing company. And I call it, I called it second house books. <laughs> so that, that's where I got that name from. So anyway, um, so for instance, let's say your, your Jupiter is in cancer in the second house. Maybe you will own a restaurant or work in a restaurant. I would say, um, you probably would own the restaurant because of Jupiter's expansive nature, but certainly it would be very lucky for you. The food business, uh, nurturing, if you are a daycare provider or um, anything like that, anything that has to do with raising children, maybe even books, writing books about child rearing practices. Um, so I'm just kind of like, looking at what they say here, not really, um, cause I, I was really agonizing about how am I going to do this? And, uh, I, they were just stressing so much about this. Um, and one thing I would say is that there's a positive attitude towards finances. Okay. So we look at Jupiter to see what area is we, we have like a lot of positivity about. Now that can just be where it begins and ends. Like you can be positive and maybe you don't make very much money, but maybe you're happy and you're okay with that. And you're not like, um, thinking that it means that you're a failure. See, that's the important thing about it. If you have the sun in the second house, and maybe if your son is in conjunction with Jupiter, or it just happens to be also in the second house, then that adds a little bit of the ego, the self-identification as it relates to how you make money, or I mean how much money you make. You may be the kind of person in that case who really does uh, want to be uh, financially successful to prove how, how successful you are <laughs> as a human being maybe. I don't know, but, um, but that can be very good for attracting money too. So if you look at other plants, like, um, another benefic planet is, um, Venus. So if Venus and Jupiter are in conjunction or in the second house, then it's like, wow, cause Venus rules the second house. So it has, um, a very attractive quality attracts money to you. One of the things that they said here is that it can make you very resourceful and resourcefulness. I, I, it's funny because the, the magician card in the, the tarot talks about you have everything you need, you know, and they show like the sword and the pentacle, they show the four, uh, suits. And basically it's like trying to let you know that you don't have to feel like you can't do whatever it is that you want to do, you have what it takes in terms of talent, but you also have it in terms of resources. And a lot of people don't feel that way because they're not like, to use a cliche, thinking outside of the box. They're just like, I don't have X amount of money in the bank, so I can't launch this business. They're not, they're not thinking to themselves, wait a second, I can get a free website. Yeah, it might not be a custom URL, but if I'm going to promote it on YouTube, I don't need it. I can just link it below. Or, you know, maybe I can get something that people will be able to understand or, or remember. 
uh, that I don't have to pay for. Maybe I will pay for it. It's only 20 bucks a month, you know, maybe I'll pay for it. Um, there's that sense of, I can do this. And that can do attitude is very important when it comes to being successful. And remember that success like wealth is relative. A lot of places on this planet are living on $2 a day. So even if you are living in one of the grittiest hoods in the United States or other countries in the Western world, specifically, you are very likely to have a lot more at your disposal than you are, um, understanding, believing, etc. And so that's what resourcefulness means that you try to just find a way, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And you don't just give up because you don't have it handed to you on a silver platter. Um, and it said that it's, they said, and suggests a well above average earning power, but at the same time, it expands your expenses too. You're prone to self-indulgence what costs a lot. So in other words, you know, buying the, the most expensive brand and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't resonate with that personally. Um, like I said, this was one that was kind of a little bit, um, not how I have experienced things having this position. However, um, you, you can get the gist of this. So I would say if you were, if you were, um, came into this world, low income, it's possible that you came from a very, um, you, you come from a family that was very positive. Okay. Um, maybe you come from an, an, like an area that has a lot of resources, even if you personally don't have them, because that's another piece of the puzzle is that, um, a lot of times there are many resources to take advantage of. Um, when I first started on YouTube, I didn't even have a cell phone. I didn't have hardly anything. I didn't even have, um, internet service. I used to go to the library for quite a while. And some of that was on me. That was just how I felt about it. I just, I was so used to it. And then I expanded my, my view on it. And I am, you know, I look back at some of those, those days of doing that and some of the little bit of horror stories, <laughs> uh, you know, being at public computers, but it really came in handy when I needed it. Let's put it that way. And that's just how life is. If you don't have the money to buy eBooks or what have you, take them out from the library. Um, you know, there's even electronic books, eBooks that you can get through the internet and download on your phone, download on, you know, a, a tablet. Don't be so eager to, to, to say what you can't do because you, you have like a lot at your fingertips. And again, I'm talking about people who don't have that much, but you know what? I don't have to lecture to you because you're probably the type of person that does do this. And the thing is, is that, um, you know, nowadays it seems very fashionable to tell people that they can't do something. And I feel like um, this is done for, this is done by design. This is done to um, discourage people from trying. So you have, you have, you probably have either this within your family or you have some kind of ability in your immediate environment to seek out some kind of um, resources. You may even find in certain cases, I don't see it here, but I'm just kind of skimming, that um, getting some kind of education can be that way of 
achieving your wealth. So um, I am not somebody that just encourages people to go to college these days just because of many different factors, include not only the cost, but what you get in return and what is, you know, the type of uh, teachings that is being encouraged and that kind of thing. You know, the way, the, what they, what they want, the agenda that they, that they have. However, the truth is that if you want to be a teacher, if you want to be a doctor, there are certain things where you have to go through, you have to jump through those hoops. And, um, I mean, maybe there's some alternative certification and that kind of thing, but in general, there are certain, um, credentials that you have to get and you have to get them through accredited, um, you know, institutions. So let's say you do come from a lower income background, especially, I mean, it could be anything, but I'm just saying that education could be your ticket into prosperity because, um, there's a, such a positivity. It makes you lucky to do whatever that is. Having your own business, uh, you know, um, focusing on business. The second house is the, is commerce. So that can be it as well. So, um, anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this resonated If you would like a private reading where I'm looking at all of these placements in your chart, because this is just one, and that's another reason why it may seem like for some people, oh, I, this doesn't really resonate for me. That happens, you know, with some of these uh, descriptions. The great thing about this compared to predictions is you don't know if those predictions are going to come true, but you know whether or not this astrological information is true for you. Um, however, it could be just the way it's being presented and there are different, um, interpretations obviously as well. So, um, the link to my website, rainamoonastrology.com is linked below. Um, thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.